Hi guys, Dr. Dillard again. Let's talk about the parietal bones, part of the, the neural cranium. And there's two of them. They're represented in green here in this model. Not a whole lot to talk about, not like the frontal bone at least. Um, here's a back view of them. We talked about the suture already. That was the sagittal suture. Uh, we talked about the suture here where it meets the frontal bone, the squamous portion of the frontal bone, and that was the coronal suture. We talked about this landmark right here called the brigma, which represented the what? Anterior fontanelle, or the soft spot in the infant skull. Okay, now we have to talk a little bit about posteriorly. Uh, the purple bone here, of course, is the occip uh, occipital bone. Uh, it is uh, actually the squamous part of the occipital bone. And we can see we have a nice suture going here. Okay, so this is called the lambdoid suture. Where they all meet, we have a special name. It's called the lambda. And what does that represent? That represents uh, a the posterior fontanelle, which is another soft spot in the infant skull. So if we keep going here to the side, let's see, how should we do this? I'm going to have to hold this. Okay, so we can see the lambdoid suture uh, continues right on down and it articulates with that salmon color bone, which is called the temporal bone. Specifically, that's the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. So that suture right here, that's called the occipital mastoid suture. Okay, let's actually turn this over now. Oh, one more. Let's do one more special spot before I turn it over. Uh, the meeting, you know, we'll learn this in the next video, but uh, this region right here, between the parietal bone and the temporal bone, that's called the parietal mastoid suture. Parietal mastoid suture. And where those three come together is another special area, and that's called the asterion. And what does that represent? That's another soft spot in the infant skull. Actually, uh, it's also called the mastoid fontanelle. Okay, now let's tip it over. It gets a little more, a little tricky underneath here. Uh, perhaps not, though. Okay, so this is still squamous here. Right, we're laying on the side. Let me give you, let me get you acclimated here. There's the lateral. So the skull is tipped over. So we can see a nice mountain range here. See that? That's the external occipital crest. That typically goes up to this big bump here, which is called the external occipital protuberance. It's not very well represented on this model at all. Uh, you can see this horizontal line quite nicely. What's that one? Inferior nuchal line. Okay, superior nuchal line would be here. I don't think you could see it very good. Uh, some skulls have, this one doesn't, but some ones, some skulls have a highest nuchal line as well. So squamous stops about at this line. If you draw a line here, kind of vertical line, right through the posterior part of the, what's that big hole called? Foramen magnum. Then everything to the left is squamous. Now everything laterally to that hole, which would be above in this region here, uh, this is all called the condylar part, condylar part of the occiput. Okay, if we, that's that includes, well let's go over these structures here too. Um, so this is the condylar foramen. Okay, that, this structure here is important chiropractically. Okay, that's the occipital condyle, which articulates with atlas. Okay, now if we go forward, you can 
can see this pretty good. We have another part. So if I put a line here, anything in front of this line, going right through the anterior part of the foramen magnum, uh, that's the basilar portion, basilar portion of the occiput. Okay. Um, so we have some sutures here. Uh, we talked, we didn't talk about, we talked about this one. What was this? Okay, that's still part of the occipital mastoid suture. But now we have another one down here. That's not a perfect suture. In fact, it's not even called a suture. It's actually called a synchondrosis. Synchondrosis because it's originally filled with hyaline cartilage and you grow, the skull grows in width from this suture. Uh, this part of the, as we'll learn in the next video, this is actually the petreous portion of the temporal bone. So this suture right here is called the petro-occipital synchondrosis. It's not a suture. A lot of books still have that written erroneously. It's not a suture. Now in front, here's the petreous portion again, this little kind of pyramid shape of bone. In front of this, it articulates with the a greater wing of the sphenoid, a little bit of the body of the sphenoid. So this is another synchondrosis called the sphenopetrosal uh, synchondrosis, sphenopetrosal synchondrosis. Okay, your skull also grows in width at this suture. It fuses by 30, uh, somewhere in the late 20s, most authors say. So the, what was this part of the bone again? basal part of the occiput, it articulates with the body of the sphenoid right here. Okay, so that's, this is where the longitudinal growth of the skull occurs. Uh, so this is called the sphenooccipital synchondrosis. Sphenooccipital synchondrosis. Again, this is not a suture. All right, not too much more, just one little more little nook and cranny to look at. You see, can you see this hole right here? Hypoglossal canal, right there, cranial nerve 12 comes out of there. And then we have this big notch right here. This dialoid process is kind of blocking it, but uh, that is the jugular foramen. What comes out of the jugular foramen? That's a common board question there. Cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, and the Internal or external jugular vein? Internal jugular vein. I think we could see it back here nicely as well. Okay, I think that is all we need to talk about with the occiput. We got the sutures, synchondrosis covered. Okay, let's move on to the next video.